everybody knows Varaki, Lord of Shadows! And I. Uh, Hello there, people. I'm the Huan, the only guy on this channel that's worth watching. Oh. Hey. Hi. Yo. I said nothing. Yeah, okay. Sorry, explain why we're here. Today, I am Zbog, the Lord of Shadows! And the Huan, the Lord of... The planet Huan, the, the <laughs> fee Huan, the... You know, we, we haven't said that in a long it. time. Yeah, yeah uh, we're going to be doing our top 10 Ruby fight scenes. Without James, one or Evan. Yes, now we've got to be clear. This is, I'm um, just going to be overall fights, like ones that are listed in the Ruby wiki. Yes. And just ones in our opinion. So this is our opinion. Our opinion, please and do not kill us over it. And check the date if you're in the future by like a year or so. Volume 4 isn't out yet. So, let's get going. Yeah. Number 10! Bitch! Despite how hyped and entertaining the Vital Festival tournament was, it was severely lacking in real spectacle fights, but this is one that Huan really likes, and in my opinion, it's not too great, but certainly is an entertaining battle with some real badass moments and cool visuals. Also a good ending. It's Yang Xiaolong vs Mercury Black. Huan time! Mmm. Well, what can you say? It's fisting versus foot fetish with guns and... Uh, probably not the best way to describe it. Either way, the fight was very enjoyable. It had great action, involved two awesome characters, that being Yang and Mercury. Duh. A great showcasing of what each character character yeah that's a thing, character can do, and it's overall a very solid match. The reason why it's at number 10, however, is besides that, nothing else really happens afterwards. Yeah, sure, Mercury did kinda let Yang win in the Ruby predict in the future. But compared to the battles further up in the list, they have a lot more reasons for why we like them. But hey, Yang vs Mercury was still a cool fight nonetheless and deserves its number 10 spot on the list. Number 9! Mm. Cinderfall has had some good fights. And her two best in our opinion get their space here in a double header. Guess we gotta do one each! Finally, separated from your dumb face! Fuck you! Fuck your back, ass what? Mmm! Ugh, Cinderfall vs. Piranikos is the first. Now, this is despite being a total ass pull for Pyrrha, it is a very exciting and spectacular battle. The way Pyrrha keeps getting up despite being just thrown around, and the sheer power she displays in going all out, as well as the way Cinder just no sells half her attacks, it really hits hard as fuck. Ooh. Moments like Cinder breaking Milo, and then her L following Elbow of Justice, Pyrrha's entrance into the battle and her giant gear attack are all topped off with one of the most powerful moments in the series. Pyrrha's death. Haven't watched Ruby yet? Sorry. Why are you on a Ruby video about fights? This moment is such an important and impacting one that the battle goes the battle goes on here for that merit alone. It's one of the few anime moments outside of Fate Chain Chronicle and Dang and Rumble for me that has managed to make me shed a tear. Strangely won though. I yeah. I Still like, I my reaction was huh. Ah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I shed one tear. So, haha, <laughs> bitch. Fuck you. The second fight is Cinderfall Emerald Sustery and Mercury Black versus Amber. This battle has a lot of uniqueness to it amongst Ruby battles. It shows a team fighting one super powerful being that's not just skilled and physically strong but has a lot of mystical power. It has an epic maiden power reveal, some brutal looking attacks, and of course a great ending. Amber's expressions and such are perfectly done and display how she felt. And the way Cinder finishes her off makes a lot of sense. The fight is overall pretty Metal Gear Solid. Huh? Piss off. Bitch. Number 8! I ate a bear! PvP was an interesting episode. It had a really good fight. And it was really fast. This fight being Piranikos versus Pally Paul and Dina, duh. It was a fight that showed some really great examples of how these two fight when facing worthy foes. And Penny's wide arcing swings and range shot against Pyrrha's steadfast determinator determiner and ability to recover her weapons from a distance really worked to make a tense and brilliant fight. The ending, while a little expected, very expected, was quite a good one and had a lot of impact to it. And of course, one must mention the impact it has on Pyrrha as a character. The fight means a lot to the series and it's also a fun and adrenaline filled rush. 
Number seven. Mm, I'm fat and I'm Alfred. And mm. old. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Volume three. Fantastic for action as as one can get from those last few. Here's another. Crow vs. Winter was fast, badass, and had some great choreography. What really sells it is the expressions the characters have. Winter is either smug or angry throughout the entire fight. While Crow is just having a good time throughout like he doesn't give a fook. And he doesn't really. It's the only battle with an anticlimactic ending that we're totally fine with because of how it fits the characters. Not much more, huh? Nope. Number 8! The episode No Breaks had two really important fights. Wise vs. What the Fuck a Little is a big one, but the one that people really didn't expect was Yang vs. Neo. This fight had fantastic choreography, great speed to it, and a real sense of disbelief because of how fucking good Neo is. Fucking Neo, babe! And probably the reason it's on this list is the context. Yang was an undefeated monster of combat, only taken out by Nora in the food fight. And once she landed, she was literally completely unharmed. However, here, she doesn't just lose, but she gets completely decimated, failing to land a single good blow on Neo, and getting beaten for only a few direct hits. There's very little one can say bad about this fight, unless they're a Yang-loving biased mofo. Number five, bitch! Blake Belladonna and Sung Wukong vs. Roman Torchwick. Why this moment? Enough said. So do I get the tour? No! <laughs> Number four! Volume three was batshit insane, and the crux of that insanity was the Battle of Beacon. Is it fair to put it on here? Fuck you, of course it is. Okay. I think this massive several episode battle is what you'd expect from a scenario such as this. The series decided to just take 75% of the cast and make them fight a fuck ton of grim, hacked at lesions, and giant paladins. It's spectacular, with a lot of little great battles in the middle. However, it really loses something with its ending, and how the dragon does a very little uh, impact despite the shit her pants reaction of Glinda. Overall a good battle, but it really could have been better and I dare say it perhaps longer. Number three faggot! Oh wait, I kinda used that voice before. Hooligan! Volume 2 had some good fights, yet only a single one has showed up on this list. One more, why not? Team Ruby vs Roman Torchwick in the Atlesian Paladin. This battle was absolutely wonderful, with great teamwork, a good example of how they developed as a team, and overall a fantastic battle. Yang's semblance, freezer burn, and Weiss's time speed up power on Blake are all some of the greatest moments of the series. This battle did have a lot of spectacle in it, and it really does deserve its place here. Yep. Number two! Two! Let's face it, most of us really got into Ruby at the point of episode 8 slash 5, Players in Pieces, and the Team Ruby and Team Juniper versus the Giant Nevermore and Deathstalker fight. The episode was almost 60% made up of this one fight, 57 to be accurate based on mass, and it really shows. The fight is a fantastic example of most characters' key features. Ruby's crazy strategies, Weiss's elemental abilities, Blake's maneuverability, Yang's strength, John's natural analytical abilities, he still sucks those, yep. Kira's skill, Ren's terrible fucking durability, and Nora's brute force. It's fantastic, and it's what got me hooked into Ruby. Don't know about Huey. Don't call me that. But yes, overall, great episode and great fight. Actually, I got into Ruby when once Yang was revealed for Death Battle, and I was like, I need to watch this, and then I watched it. Huey. Nemi. Now before we get to our number one, we have some honorable mentions. Now these are all improvised in why they're honorable mentions, but we'll try it anyway. First off, Ruby Rose vs. Roman Torchwick and Neapolitan. Uh, just like the teamwork in the fight. Not a lot happened, but still, it's a fancy fight to end off one of the um, episodes. Cinder 4 vs. Professor Rospin. While the fight was really good, it was so short, right? Oh, it's so fucking short! Yes, it is. Team Ruby vs. Team Arvin. Great way to actually uh, start up to Volume 4, but other than Great. that... Free. Fuck, I need to do my research again. <laughs> it's a great way to start off Volume 3, but other than that, yeah, nothing much happens. Team Juniper vs. Team Bronze. While I do like the fight and the animation throughout, the way it ends is a humongous ass pull of titanic proportions. Yang Chaolong and Y Snee vs. Flint Cole and Neon Cat. I like Flint. And this was an okay fight. 
Once again, just not a lot happened. The wise was very mad in the battle. But overall, it's nice to see Yang kicking some ass. Team Sun versus Team Indigo. Yes, it was okay. But let's be honest. It was really just one member of Indigo gets fucked. And the rest of Team Sun jobs their way to victory. Finally, finally, Blake Belladonna and Sun Wukong versus the Dargan thing that comes out of the ocean. It's a good fight overall, but it's really weird. And while it does give you a good adrenaline rush throughout, it's honestly kind of off-putting because it's very different to what we're used to. And some of the momentum that Blake can get is just ridiculous. But hey, it was nice to see Sun fighting and that captain was awesome. So yeah, yeah, the captain. Most badass guy. Captain for headmaster, go! Armageys! Yar, mateys! I'm a pirate somehow! Yar! Number, Number one! <laughs> okay, wow, we are going really cliche here. Team Ranger and Crow Branwin versus Tyrion Kalos is a fantastic battle. Taking place over two episodes, it's fast and frantic and impactful. While it doesn't have as much meaning to it or even teamwork, one can hardly deny the awesome. Oh, the first half involves Tyrion dismantling Ranger with relative ease. This is important for a few reasons. It gives a good idea of how over their heads Ranger are, and an idea of just how strong Tyrion is. It's also very awesome, the way that Ranger works together is simply stunning. Both in a what the fuck and holy shit way. Tyrion is also just so fucking cool. But it really gets going when Crow starts doing shit. Their fight is not only one of the fastest, but also one of the most badass and entertaining. He shows a lot about their characters, Crow's smug but caring and intelligent nature, and Tyrion's psychopathic and brutal nature that makes it with just incredible skill. You really get a thrill in this fight that most others don't deliver on, and that is why it is our number one favorite Ruby fight. L yes! So guys, that was our top 10 Ruby fight scenes. Hope you enjoyed! Very little, it was a very little, it was a little bit short, but overall we enjoyed making it. Yep, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it too. So, I'm just gonna lead. I'm the Huan. Illusion's kind of lost when you can hear the door. And I'm Nemesis, Bob Dark, the Lord of Shadows, signing off once again. Legasp!